Yeah. Well, let's, we're going to go ahead and get started now. Uh, I want to welcome everybody and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Ribulus uh, Irrigation Training Series. I'm your host, Richard Restucia, and today we're going to be talking about the weather. And it's funny because in the old days, a lot of people used to say, well, when you didn't have anything to talk about, you talked about the weather. But what we found, right, in our industry, that weather is probably one of the most important factors uh, that we can talk about. Uh, it affects everything we do uh, daily, and how we manage the weather can really impact uh, the success of our farming operations. So uh, joining us today is Connor Cunningham. He's the technical sales and project manager for Jane uh, for our Ribulus, or actually M Mana these days. I'm sorry, Mana, see if yeah. I get away from uh -huh. this for a week or two and uh, a little <laughs> tongue tied there. But um, anyway, uh, Connor's been involved with ag tech for a, a long time, a little over five years now with the group he's uh, affiliated with today. Uh, Connor has uh, really uh, focused all of his time post graduation. He's a Fresno State grad, by the way, into ag technology which is great because you don't find that many people with uh, this uh, level of experience and uh, experience all in uh, one location, the Central Valley of California, which is a big, big ag producing area of the United States. So uh, Connor, um, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for joining and talking about weather today because I do know you've got a lot of in-depth knowledge about this subject. You've been using all the analytics available to you today through uh, Jane uh, Logic, and uh, you're gonna share with us, I believe, how others can use this. Yeah, definitely, and I'm very excited to share my experiences, experiences of the growers that I work with about how this information can be used and how it's helpful. I do wanna start off by saying that this is definitely just a piece of the puzzle. But it's nice for us to kind of take a step back and slow down and just say, hey, let's just focus on one aspect of this for the time being. And then we'll, we'll sprinkle in a little bit about how this kind of works into the bigger picture of the overall farm operations, right? Yeah. So the one thing I think about always with weather, though, Connor, and, uh, and uh, uh, the green industry and farming is that, why do we care? There's nothing we can do about it. Right. Right, definitely. And that's very true. You know, we cannot control the weather. That's unfortunately uh, just the way the world works. <laughs> but what we can control is we can control how we react to that. And so that's why I think having access to information on weather conditions and what we call abiotic conditions out in the field will be uh, really helpful for how and when we react, you know, how long we irrigate, when we irrigate, and then also you know, more namely, what's probably the most popular is frost protection. We'll be talking about that more in today's uh, webinar, but, you know, having access to this information, having access to these tools really helps us to be um, as, as proactive in our reaction as we can when it comes to frost protection by having access to this information. Yeah, well, that's great. Now, and Connor, the other thing I just want to mention to uh, to all the viewers out there today is that you're actually going to be showing some of the Jane Logic software live uh, uh, today. Correct? You're going to take us yes. through a little bit of that. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So I'm really excited to talk about that uh, today. So this is actually a good chance for any of our Jane Logic users that might be on today. This will be almost like a refresher training for you, and so. Um, you know, this would be a good chance. So if you want to kind of follow along yourself at home, you're welcome to do so. You know, I'm always up for interaction. So yeah, it's really cool. Uh, and thank you for doing that. And one thing's for sure, you know, if you're not doing it every day, I know for me, I forget. Right. And uh, so, you know, you mentioned frost protection, which is something I'm not that interested in today in actually doing. Right. Right. But, but learning it and understanding it uh, is going to help me in the winter. And uh, certainly, I know you're going to be talking a lot about uh, heat and uh, yeah. how, how we manage that uh, too. So we're excited to get this going. Definitely. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen here and let's go ahead and jump on over to Jane Logic itself. Uh, so that way we can start our discussion here. Yeah. And I just want to mention that, uh, Connor, you're not on some super high speed internet connection or anything. This is the same speed that we're going to see this uh, operate that most people get uh, every day when they interact with uh, Jane Logic. Yeah, exactly. It's just good old AT&T Wi-Fi right here. So we'll see how good they are. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point to point out. So, you know, when we start thinking about weather station, weather station data, the type of weather station that we're using is really just an off the shelf product. It's a Davis Instruments Vantage Pro 2 weather station that we're connecting to. So, a uh, quick side note, you know, if you actually have one of these devices, it's very likely that we'll actually be able to connect it to our system. So if you're not an existing Jane Logic user and what you're seeing today interests you, you have one of these devices, we can have that conversation offline because we could most likely be able to bring all this information into a very easily digestible platform like Jane Logic for you. So just something, a little quick side note that I wanted to point out there. And so when we think about the Davis Instruments Vantage Pro 2, we actually get a lot of good information based on that. So that device, we're able to get temperature readings, we can get humidity readings, we're getting wind direction, wind speed, we're also getting rain from our little rain bucket as well. So, and uh, we're also able to get solar radiation, which we'll talk about what that is here in just a little bit. So right off the bat, you know, we're getting five or six measurement points just off of one device. And so what Jane Logic does is we actually take that one step further and we're actually able to manipulate that data and present it in different ways that you can find the information that you're looking for a little bit quicker as well. And then on top of that too, what we're going to be looking at here today is along with information from the weather station, we're also going to be looking at some of the other information that just comes natively in Jane Logic as well, namely the forecasts too. So when we look at Jane Logic, um, what I really like about Jane Logic is it's color coded and it's also uh, has icons as well. And so I'm somebody that likes that because I'm not that smart. So it allows me to find the information that I need really quickly. So when we think about having a weather station in the Jane Logic platform, you're going to be able to note it based on two things right here, right? So we're going to, it's either going to be notated in a little thermometer icon, like the one that I have highlighted here, or it, if we have what's a really common setup for a lot of our users is to have a soil moisture probe, pressure sensor, and then they also tack on a weather station on top of that. The end of the name of the device will all ha also have WS on there as well. So if you're confused as to where your weather station might be located in your assets, just look for the one that has WS on the end of it. So by selecting this one here, we can see that the data will actually refresh on the right hand side of the page. And personally, where I like to go first is I actually like to scroll down in the page and I like to look at the latest readings widget right here. Mm -hmm. And the reason I like to do that is because it lets me know, hey, what was the most recent data point that I can have for whatever information I'm looking for? So we, right here, we can see that as of today, as of 11.55 a.m., and it's only 12.10 p.m. right now, that the last temperature reading was 89.8 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see our humidity reading and our dew point reading. And then as we scroll through here, we also see all the other information that we get from that weather station. So like I mentioned, we got our wind, got our wind direction, gust speed, gust direction. And then we also get our rainfall here. So this is really helpful for folks during the winter time who are curious about how much rain they received every single day. And we've talked about this in the past where we say, hey, you know, rain is our free water from God that we can use as part of our water budget and our water accounting as we go throughout the season. So uh, for those of you who have been with us for a long time, you've probably seen that webinar, hopefully, <laughs> where we talked about that in depth in regards to water management. But for those of you who may not, you can always go back and view these webinars. They're cataloged in our irrigation series library and you can go back and, and watch that and learn a little bit more about what we talked there. Um, but this is where we start to look at where GeneLogic starts to take that information and starts to do something with it, right? So you can see that we also calculate how much rain is captured in the day, a month and a year. So at this location here, we can see that we actually got 21.93 inches of rain. So this is really helpful because now we can say, okay, as I'm thinking about how much water I put towards my field, here's how much that I actually got for free that will go towards my water balance towards the end of the year. And then here's our solar radiation reading right here. This is a matter of how much sunlight is actually being seen at the peak of the day. So we're at a maximum measurement of a thousand for amount of sunlight and canopy cover. So we can see here in this location, we have quite a bit of sunlight hitting our field. And then we can also see 
that our system then will calculate how much ETO you're getting in a month and how much ETO year to date as well. So, uh, so, so, so much useful information, uh, Connor. I just want to remind everybody who's watching today, we do have the Q&A and the chat open. So if you have some questions or comments, put them in there and uh, I'll get them to Connor where appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I want to ask, of course, I understand why rain is so important to this, but why is solar radiation or wind speed or these other things that you're looking at here so important to, uh, to, to management? Yeah, so we'll talk a little bit more about wind speed here in just a minute, uh, but solar radiation is really helpful because this is actually also factoring into our ET measurements that you see down below, because ET is based on evaporation and transpiration. And so depending on how intense that sun is and how hot the temperatures are, we're taking that into consideration into how much is actually being pulled out of the soil and then transpired through the leaves and evaporated off of the soil surface as well. So this is actually a really important measurement to have to know, okay, when, when the sun's the brightest, you know, and it's not super cloudy, obviously my ET values are going to rise up. And then also talking about ET values, uh, we'll look at some of the graphs here in a second where we can look at daily ET values. But this is really important for obviously our irrigation management and our irrigation scheduling because, because this device is placed directly in our field, which I've mentioned this before in regards to satellite information. I'm a really big fan of having devices in your field giving you actual information on your field specifically because everybody's field is a little bit different. We have microclimates all across California. We have microclimate, excuse me, microclimates all across the entire globe. So having information directly on your field every 15 minutes, I think makes you an even better water manager, excuse me, water manager than you were before. So this is really, really, really good information to have when you think about planning your irrigation, saying, okay, 2.6 inches came off this month. Where am I at? How much water have I put on my field? Am I keeping up? Am I behind? Am I a little ahead? Where, where am I at? Where am I sitting? Yeah, all very useful and helpful and, uh, and, and definitely the things that water managers have to be thinking about every day. Yes, yes, exactly. And so when we think about water management, we also think about a lot of the other farm activities. So going back to your question here, and this is a good segue into the next portion that I want to be looking at. Oh, look, you can see it's actually updating right now. We're reaching that 15 minute mark where it's going to be updating. That's why it's saying loading right here. So, hey, it's a live demo. There we go. As of 1210. Now we have new readings. We went at 0. 0.6 degrees out in the field, just in case you're curious. <laughs> so uh, we can see here, so, you know, we have uh, information helping us with our irrigation management, but we also have information coming from this weather station that helps us with other management practices on, in, on the farm. So having access to wind direction, wind speed is really crucial for people when they're planning their sprays, because if the winds are too high, we're going to get too much drift. And this is especially important because we can get in a lot of legal trouble too. If we're spraying in, in areas of high wind, when we're also next to residential areas or school zones, we really don't want, we really want to minimize that instance of having drift. So that way we don't get in trouble. So having access to our wind direction and our wind speed is really crucial for us to plan some of our other management activities too. And I've actually also had uh, people with uh, sprinklers and micro sprinklers out in their field. They use this information to plan when they're actually gonna be irrigating as well to minimize the amount of evaporative loss from their system. So instead of having to put on you know, 30 hours, they can put on 24 hours if they time it correctly. So they're saving six hours right away. So you can see here the direction with the little arrow, the latest uh, mile per hour. I hopped on this morning and it was only one mile an hour, not a surprise for this time of year. And then we can also see the direction. Also not a surprise in California that we're getting our wind from the Northwestern location. So, so cool. I, I love seeing the uh, past 24 hours and the compass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I yeah, it's pretty helpful. That before. That's very nice. Yeah, yeah. So it's really helpful. So, um, you know, it's it's helpful to know which direction it's coming from again. So that way you can plan your spray activities out in the field. So another helpful tool, um, I'm actually going to show you a live example because, or uh, excuse me, a past example, because our live example is not working since we haven't seen any temperatures below 36 degrees here. But 
the temperature is also used and uh, recalculated to show you some very actionable, actionable information on our, uh, whether or not we're having some freezing conditions. So this is really important for planning for your frost, right? And making sure that you're not incurring any ex additional damage due to uh, freezing conditions, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop share here and I'm gonna pull up my uh, presentation here. So that way I can show you guys what this looks like here. So Connor, we did have a question coming in that I'll ask you while you're uh, getting that information. It looked like uh, freeze hours, uh, the max was one week, but uh, can, can you actually see for a whole season uh, what, the, what the freeze hours are? Um, so yes, you can go back and look at freezing conditions, but you'd have to go back into the default measurement chart, which is where we'll be going here in just a, a little bit. But yeah, you can look at an entire week's worth of data here. And the thing that's really nice about this uh, freeze hours box here, which you can see is it lets you know exactly how long you, your field was staying in each one of these critical temperatures, right? So looking at this example right here over the last week, we really realistically only spent 12 hours uh, in that actual 32 degree zone and then five hours in the 31 degree zone. So I know some plants are able to have a high enough tolerance to withstand a few hours of 32 degrees, but if they go below that, then that's when the real um, that's when the real damage can start to occur. So looking at this, this gives us an idea of, yeah, it's been really cold, and even though my system's alerting me, which again, another part of what we're going to be talking about here in just a little bit, my system's alerting me that we're getting close to these conditions. How close am I getting? You know, did, did I get an alert at 34 degrees and we dropped down to 32 and then came right back up? You know, that's, that's really crucial because that's a difference of spending money in the wintertime to turn on our system to then run that irrigation. So, you know, you can start to see how you can use this information more and more. Yeah, it's kind of neat. So if I'm looking at this correctly, I can see really 20 hours over the week, uh, less than three hours a day mm -hmm. uh, for, for the freeze hours. So that, that right. helps give me a little bit more perspective on this. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. And so uh, really helpful information. So, um, you know, along with looking at how this data is being presented from the sensors, um, we can also look at it in the uh, kind of the detailed view as well. So um, let's go ahead and jump back over to Jane Logic really quick here um, so we can see what that looks like. So um, in Jane Logic, the like I said, the system's updating every 15 minutes, right? So where does all that data go? Well, all that data is then cataloged per site for you. So that way you can actually go back and look at, hey, what were the highs and the lows of the temperatures yesterday? Did I get down to those freezing temperatures? How long was I in those freezing temperatures for this site specifically, right? And then also, you know, how much rain did I get yesterday? Yes, the latest readings tells us how much we, how much rain we got in a day, but it refreshes at the end of the day. So what, how much rain did I get yesterday? How much rain have I gotten over this entire month? This is where you'd be able to find some of that information right now. So you, you can see I've got the last six months pulled up for this site. And you can see that I can scroll across here, look for highs and lows over each day. And then um, same thing with our humidity, which is important for our springtime conditions, right? If the humidity gets too high and we get some late spring rains, those are really good conditions for fungus to start growing. So if you haven't you know, planned your sprays out or if you want to be tracking that to make sure that you time your sprays correctly to apply your fungicides, this is really important information to have. And then we can also see, you know, at the end of January here that the site got 6.31 inches of rain. So it was in a really good spot to receive a lot of rain here. So this is all the information I get if I have a uh, weather station. Correct. Do mm -hmm. I get any of this information if I don't have a weather station or don't want to buy a weather station? So you wouldn't have access to this real-time information here, but what you would have access to is you would have access to the forecasts. And so that's a really great place for us to start jumping off to here. So along with that, you know, along with the cataloged information, we also have access to uh, forecast information. So what's going to be happening, right? So coming back to Jane Logic here, we can look at a live forecast. And so with our seven-day forecast, you get on your ET, your temp, 
humidity, rain, and wind as well. Obviously, we haven't had any rain, so it's zero inches per day. <laughs> um, but if you'll notice here in each one of these forecasts, as somebody's account matures past one year, you'll actually start to get a dashed line and a solid line. To me, this is really important because this allows us to see the differences year to year. The dashed line is last year's forecast for this week, and the solid line is the forecast for this week. So you can you can already see right here the differences between the two years for this location specifically. So this is really helpful for irrigation planning. Yeah, so if I'm reading this correctly, it the ET requirement is higher this year than last year. Correct, at this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For this specific uh, week, uh, the 12th uh, going forward. So why is that important to me? Yeah, so this is important because like last year we had the really, it was really, really hot in the summertime. And, you know, this year we were able to wait a little bit longer. So every year is a little bit different. So this is really important for us to see those differences because it helps to remind us, hey, you know, I put on a lot of water this time of year, last year, and hey, I'm going to need to do it again because they're very similar or very different. You know, last year it was super hot and super windy. And so my ET values were really high, but this year not so much. So I can start to cut back on water. Again, it helps us to plan and be a little bit more agile when we're thinking about irrigation management. Yeah, I think that's awesome because then we have the ability to look back and say, gee, uh, what was it last year? What did I do and how did that affect my yield? So right. I can adjust off that, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, so this is a really helpful tool to have. And then you can then start to look at this, do your planning, and then you can also um, have access to alerts. So if you do have your um, a weather station connected here, heck, if you have any sensor connected to our C3, you can actually be alerted on it. And so again, the most common thing that people are alerted on are frost conditions. So people will use the alert functionality to be alerted when you start approaching 34 degrees. And those who are uh, really concerned about it, what they'll do is they'll have their weather station above the canopy and they'll have a secondary temperature sensor below the canopy so they can track that inversion layer. So they can be alerted when this first one hits 34 and then when this next one hits 34. And then as they start their frost protection practices by turning on the irrigation, they can start to see that temperature rise down here, even though it might still be colder up here. So again, allows us to be much more agile in our reactions to trying to uh, control what we can't control, right? So, and then I've even heard stories of people using these to also make sure that their crews stay safe working in the heat, being alerted when you start to get towards that 93, 95 degree temperature, making sure that everybody has knocked off so that way uh, we're not gonna get in trouble with OSHA. Right, really a big safety concern, uh, big, big mm -hmm. issues, right? We were talking about that a little bit at the beginning, you know, some jobs we're doing out in Florida right now where it's getting to be 110, 112. It's uh, right. unheard of heat right now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, if if maybe you're a labor contractor, maybe you're a PCA, or maybe, you, you know, you're water manager yourself, and you have crews working out in the field, this could be a really beneficial tool from that aspect, too. And like I talked about, you know, the humidity, you can even be alerted on high humidity conditions. And that will be really important to make sure that, you know, you've got your sprays on and that, uh, you know, you can be looking for those uh, fungal conditions, those those ripe conditions for fungal growth out in the field. Yeah. So the other thing that I always think about uh, when when I think about going forward, right? And I love to be thinking about going forward, <laughs> no matter what I'm doing. Uh, mm -hmm. But in this case, what about nutrient management? Does a look forward help me with nutrient management at all, Connor? Yes, I believe it does because if you think about the different types of nutrients that we might be applying, whether it's some sort of a urea based or if it's like a CAN 17 or UN 32 um, nitrate based, whatever that might be, those all have different volatility, excuse me, volatility levels. And so depending on whether you're uh, applying it on the surface, you're applying foliar, injecting, incorporating, that will have a factor on whether or not that then goes back into the atmosphere, it gets stuck in the soil or how quickly it goes into the plant itself. So this is actually very important information to have when you're planning, uh, your, when you're doing your fertility management as well. 
Yeah, excellent. So uh, we've got, and that's really right. Um, mm -hmm. What what a what a key management tool for uh, increasing uh, your your yields. That's for sure. Right. right. Uh, so we've got a question coming in from one of the viewers, and uh, they're asking about the data source for the weather forecast. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so Richard, I'll have you help me on this as well because a uh, little over a year ago, we actually incorporated the same weather. Uh, information that you guys use for the ET water platform. And so uh, the ET water platform actually uses multiple weather inputs to actually create a really robust weather forecast. So it's not just going based off of one, it's actually pulling information from multiple sources and then calculating that to give you a really, uh, really accurate weather forecast. I don't know if you want to add on to that yeah. at all. Well, you know, I, I I don't think I could have said it better myself, Connor, uh, but I, I just, uh, that was really a good answer. I oh, did want to mention too, though, that um, uh, the weather data sources, we uh, use uh, several, and we're always testing others, right? Because we want the most accurate, but um, what has changed, you know, in the past few years, and this is certainly something everybody's experiencing is the ability for weather service providers to predict accurately uh, weather has been amazing, right? right. So the right. imaging has gotten so much tighter and so, so much sharper. And right. as you uh, as you add different um, um, things that you talk about, solar radiation, uh, we've got uh, different uh, AI calculations that are happening daily that are really uh, making all this much more accurate to where we really can get down to uh, uh, minutes, uh, not just hours or half hours, but down to minutes for certain uh, events that are happening that, uh, that really um, uh, help us out. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully that answered the viewer's question there. Yeah. And, you know, we've got this, uh, it's the Jane Unity uh, uh, platform uh, API. And uh, we also, uh, like uh, Jane Logic uses it, uh, we can uh, lease this out to other entities that want uh, access to this information as well. Awesome. Yeah. I'm glad you added that little detail there. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Sorry. Good. Good. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you. We're a team. So, yeah, so kind of jumping back here. So uh, kind of in conclusion here, one last place where we can find access to this information, you might say, well, Connor, this is all fine and dandy, but I kind of want to get some of this information a little bit quicker. I want to know what those highs and lows are instead of having to go through the graphs. I want to know what my, my averages and my totals were. Well, what you can do is you can actually select your master folder and Jane Logic actually has a report available to you that you can use. So you can just select the time frame that you're interested in. You can select the format that you want to consume it, and you can either download it to your computer or you can send an email to yourself right away. So that way you can just ship that off. I've actually had people use these reports <laughs> to report to their bosses because their bosses are saying, "Hey, what was you know what was the field conditions yesterday? I want to know what the highs and the lows were. I want to know how much you how much you put on the field, so on and so forth." And they just download a couple of our reports and send them off, and they're done. So. Yeah, I think I'm glad you mentioned that because I think that's what's so, so valuable about this is your ability to uh, email the information. You don't need to get uh, ten different users on the uh, on the dashboard. Uh, you can right. certainly provide the pertinent information to uh, to those that need it. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. So with that, that kind of brings us to the end here of you know what we had. Uh, we have access to. Again, this is really just a piece of the puzzle, a tool in the tool chest that we have available to us. We have a lot of other tools that we can use. And, you know, a lot of these concepts that we talked about today, um, I know it was, it was very Jane Logic centric, but a lot of these same concepts can be used um, if you don't have access to Jane Logic. Jane Logic just makes it much more streamlined, much more efficient, you know, easier to consume and easier to handle. So um, I do want to share my screen one last time here. So that way I can just uh, wrap up by, you know, putting my information on the screen in case anybody wants to get a hold of me here, they can, they can do so. So that way they can see. So really, Connor, if I have a question about something I saw today, or if I just have a general question about uh, irrigation or irrigation technology, I can just uh, email or call you. That That's okay. Yeah, more than happy to chat. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily mean that we're going to put something in your field. I would prefer that, but I do enjoy talking about this topic. So I have no problem with people contacting me and we can talk more.
Yeah, and I think that's really uh, an important point that uh, you're truly passionate about the industry, what you're doing, and you're passionate about making other people successful. And that's a unique uh, and rare talent that you have there. And uh, I know all your customers appreciate it. So uh, so thank you for, for sharing that information and being so willing to help people out. Yeah, of course. And, you know, again, you know, we talk about it all the time, but I do just want to call out our irrigation dealers, Avid Water, you know, they're it's just part of a, a bigger picture, right? Just like the weather is part of a bigger set of tools that we have available to us. Um, we really are a, a part of a really rock star team. I'm not the only individual that's passionate about all this. You know, Avid Water is a great resource that we have available to us as well that just really, you know, as part of the whole Revealist family, it just makes us a really strong partner to work with. Yeah, great points, uh, Connor. And the fact that you mentioned it say a lot about you. So thank you. Um, I want to thank everybody, too, for tuning in today. We really appreciate it. Uh, we know your days are busy, especially in the middle of summer days, uh, mm -hmm. especially busy. So thank you. Uh, please remember, you can see all of our trainings at the Jane's USA forward slash uh, trainings page. Uh, uh, this is Smart Irrigation Month, uh, designated by the Irrigation Association. I wanted to also mention that many of our trainings also carry a... Um, uh, certification credit. So if you watch that, you can use it as your credits uh, as you improve yourself uh, and make yourselves uh, better water managers. We're also uh, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, right? We extract the audio, put it as a podcast as well. I love it, Connor, to think people are out there working and educating at the same time. There's almost nothing makes me happier than when I think about that for our industry. So yes, again, definitely. Connor, thank you very much for joining us today. We're going to be back me. next week uh, with Mike Palumbo. He's going to be talking about some cool new reports that have to do with the weather and uh, ET and uh, over and under values uh, next week. So we hope to see everybody there. And uh, again, Connor, thanks very much. Uh, I hope everybody has a great rest of the day and uh, stay cool out there. All right. Thank, thank you. you.